We have a special, special guest, guest star. Uh huh. Who I, I don't know about this. I don't guest. either. I think you could uh, guess. Yes, Carl. Hey, yes, Carl. Hey, <laughs> Carl quits hey. this bitch. Before, before your daughter leaves, you gotta let her know I'm gonna have a pet therapist on my program next week. A pet therapist? Yeah, it's the craziest thing I've ever heard of. But apparently, they've got him, and the fella wrote a book. And he's going to be on the program, so I'm looking for people that love pets. And I know that she's really, she cares more about pets than you, probably. And well, all let's, of her let's pets pra- need a therapist. Let's so practice your works. interview style, Carl, because uh, it's been a long time since you've been a professional broadcaster. So um, uh, I'll be the pet therapist, and you be the interviewer, okay? Okay. Okay. Sure. All right. Ask me a question. Well, I just wanted you to tell the people a little bit about who you are and how you became a pet therapist. Uh, my name is Ferdinand Rachikakov. I'm a Russian, and uh, I believe that animals have souls and that you can read their moods in their eyes, and they suffer from the same sorts of depressions and the same sort of maladies that human beings do, and I, I think that we can treat them uh, better. That's very interesting. Now, That's the reason school. I said it. So <laughs> I wanted to say something interesting to you. Oh, I'm sorry to walk over you as a my <laughs> program. You're the book author, and uh, would t- is that how you do it, Don? Yes, you you put them in their place, and you did a perfect job. You, okay. all, all you have, but when you can shorten it. You can just say, "Shut the fuck up." I ask the questions. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'd say anything like that. No, come on. Yeah. You Carl know, you guys were talking about the bathroom? Yeah, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> well, I had a funny story about the, up at the Buck Shack. And uh, what we had going there in the outhouse was a phantom shitter. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we as a bunch of guys okay. up there. There's probably about 25 all together with kids and everything. And every day or every weekend, somebody would shit on the back of the toilet seat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, upper decker. He would do it, leave an upper decker for you? That's not good, man. Nobody would ever claim it. And then you'd get in there and there'd be a little pile of shit like he was sitting back too far. And uh, it, it got him. It, it escalated quite a bit. And, and we're trying to find out who the phantom shitter was. Well, he got also real competitive with shooting deer and naming uh, what animal they heard in the nighttime and all that. And a fellow by the name of Tom was up there, uh-huh. and he cleaned off the toilet seat real good. Uh-huh. And he said that he cleaned it with uh, uh, alcohol, and he melted some chocolate and put it on there. And then we were at the campfire having brandy, and he said, now, the, vo- the, the audio or the bird we heard was something, and he knew what it was, but he, he said it the opposite. And he said, if that is a loon or an eagle, whatever it was, I forget. He said, I'll lick the shit off that toilet seat. And they, everybody confirmed that it was that sound. It was a loon. He, and he walked over to the toilet seat with everybody in a flashlight, oh and he grabbed it, God. and he licked it, and he ate it, and about four, four guys puked. <laughs> <laughs> and it went on. He kept it going for probably, oh, God, I don't know, half the evening. <laughs> And uh, it couldn't believe what it was. And then one of the young boys, you know, came clean and said that he was a phantom shitter. And uh, <laughs> that he, he felt real bad that he licked his shit. But it was all a setup. And it was <laughs> kind of buckshack type stuff. You know? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so now what phantom time? Phantom shitter. Do you do your show live or do you record it and then release it? Yeah, today we did a live show today. Fabulous. It has an open line. That's the only way you can get people to call in is if you have the open line. Well, that oh, that's true. Yeah, that was foolish of me to ask that question. Yeah, and uh, next week is going to be the pet therapist interview. So if anybody knows or has problems with their pet, boy, I'd love them to call and ask him questions because I don't know who the hell would pay somebody to tell them what their pet <laughs> is feeling or thinking. <laughs> to me, it's absurd. But uh, apparently these people today love it. When it when uh, what's the phone number for the podcast? Yes. No, for get a yellow cab. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, no for the podcast. <laughs> yes, for the podcast. Two 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 two. Is it 
number for that. That's for the oh. yellow cab, yes. Three 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 for a blue and white. Yeah, and I think four eight 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 is for a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're absolutely <laughs> right, girl. Bet the dose, bet the dose, bet the dose, bet the dose is for accidentes. That's in LA. Great. Gazoon type. <laughs> Number there is uh, for the podcast is 612-567-2538. And when do you record? Tuesdays from 2 to 3. Tuesdays from 2 to 3, okay. Tuesdays from 2 to 3, and that's up on the, T- the TFB network, from what I understand. Yeah, it's really... Kind of it, it's it's pretty awesome, Tom. Well, I know. I, hey, listen, I've been getting nothing but good reports on the Carl Franklin podcast. People love it. Yeah, and uh, I might have to talk with one of your sponsors, the Squarespace. I was listening there about them. That's how I know nothing about that kind of stuff, but it sounds like they're a turnkey operation. <laughs> Yeah, I think you should talk. We we got to get some advertisers on the Carl Franklin uh, podcast. Yeah, you know what I did on today's show? We did a Craigslist call because there's a lot of you who's out there on that, <laughs> and we called a guy who's selling his business. He, he's got the uh, three wheel bike that carries a hearse for uh, motorcycle funerals, like Last Ride, I think it's called. No, Last Ride. Yes, yeah, correct. And he's on Craigslist. He's selling his business. So we interviewed him today, too. And I thought, my God, that's, you know, death is a good business. I could probably sell funeral plots or uh, anything like that at my age. Sure, sure. Be planning. Cremation Society, something like that. Cremation Society. Take, the, take that business away from uh, Bud Grayling. Right. Yeah, take it away from everybody. Who the hell cares? We're on the interweb. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. Well, Carl, uh, uh, people are loving the show. I'm telling you, I'm getting a lot of good reports. People love the Carl Franklin podcast, man. Well, I appreciate being on the program. And uh, did you hear about the guy who uh, was fishing? And uh, he brought all the fish into the, the bait store and showed him. And the warden was there. He said, hey. Where'd you get all these fish? He said, well, come with me. I'll show you. So he drives them out to this peninsula, and he stops, and he pulls up behind the seat, and he pulls a stick of dynamite out, and he lights it. He throws it in the water, and boom, it goes off, and all these fish float up. Well, the warden sitting in the truck says, that's illegal. You can't do that. So he reaches behind the seat, grabs another stick of dynamite, lights it, hands it to the warden, and says, well... You're going to fish or what? <laughs> <laughs> Carl Franklin, ladies and gentlemen, Carl, a big we round can, of applause. Let me get Carl one uh, fishing joke. For yeah, him, since I, Carl I, loves I, fishing I, jokes. Sounds good to me, man. So the uh, a man about your age, Carl, um, goes out fishing with um, a 22-year-old beautiful uh, woman in a bikini. And he uh, goes out and fishes all Come. day. See it all the time. And uh, it was during a tournament uh, when there were a lot of boats on the water. And he found a place out of the wind and out of the view of everybody else. And uh, when they all came back to the dock, the professional fishermen had been They had not caught a thing. And uh, they were waiting for the old man to come in. And he came in, this little 25-horsepower Lund. And he pulled up to the dock with the girl. And uh, all the professional fishermen looked at him and said, did you catch anything? And he looked back at the woman and said, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think of that action, Carl? Well, I don't get it. <laughs> well, there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, you would if you I could. don't get it. That's all you need to know. Toodaloo, Carl. Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, phantom oh, shitter. The phantom, the phantom shitter. shitter. That is the greatest I, I was thing gonna, I've ever I was heard. going to guess it was one of the kids because, you know, when a, when a kid is learning to poop on, on those things, they don't want to, in an outhouse, you are so worried that you're going to fall through that hole into that honey pot. Oh, you don't fall uh, in that hole. No, but you're so worried as a, a kid because your ass doesn't fill the seat. So you scoot back as far as you can on the seat. And that's why you end up with a turd right on the Duh. back of the church seat. Turd.